Hello, hello. Welcome to Farm Girl Friday. I'm Mike, chef and content creator here at Farm Girl, and today we're going to be starting to work on some holiday baking. Okay, it's December 1st, and over the coming weeks, I'm going to be working on some stuff using the Farm Girl products that you can use and serve during this holiday season. Today, we're going to be making a Scottish style shortbread finger, like kind of like Walker shortbread. Um, everybody's one of everybody's favorites at the holidays. I'm going to be working today with the Farm Girl low carb pastry flour to make these. Shortbread is one of the most simple things to make. It is three ingredients. So we've got the, the pastry flour we're going to work with. We've also got um, butter. There's a fair amount of butter that goes into shortbread because that's really what makes it so delicious. And then as well as sweetener. Okay, so I'm going to start making, I'll make the dough. It comes together pretty quick. I'll show you um, how I'm going to form it. You can also work with this dough in a bunch of different ways if you want to like put it into a circle and cut it into wedges or even form it into cookies. Rolling it out and cutting it into shapes which some people do for shortbread. You can do that, but these will spread a little bit if you do that. They won't keep their shape perfectly just because of that leavening that is in the pastry flour, okay? But they will turn out really good as fingers, which is how I'm gonna show you make them today. So let's look down at the bowl and we'll start here just with our butter. So you can do this with an electric mixer. I decided today that I'm gonna show you how to do it by hand because it comes together really easily and you don't really need any special tools for this. So the one thing I'll say is with the butter, I don't know if you can kind of tell on camera, it's, it's soft, soft enough I can put my spoon through it, but you don't want this to be super soft where it's like where I can just like run my my um, my spoon through it and it would kind of smear like it's we don't want it to be like a paste we want it to be a little bit thicker but also not you know straight out of the fridge not fridge cold but we just want to be able to um, mix this up without it melting out while we're mixing the dough so I'm going to start by just kind of softening the butter a little bit up with my um, with my spoon here a wooden spoon is a great tool for this. And again, you can do this with an electric mixer if you have one. You could even do it in a stand mixer if you want to. All right, the next thing I have here is some sweetener. So you're gonna wanna work with a granulated sweetener like an erythritol. This is like an isomalt, like so also a, um, a low calorie sweetener. Um, if you wanna make this with sugar because you're not worried about keto, um, you can add sugar on there, but obviously that's probably not what's gonna, most of you are gonna be doing. But working with a granulated sweetener is gonna give this a much nicer texture. I actually have not tested this with like a spl um, like Splenda or like a, one of those Stevia cup for cup measures kind of sweeteners um, you do need some of that kind of the chemical properties of sugar which erythritol and isomalt will give you to give you that kind of crisp flaky texture to your shortbread okay so I'm gonna add that into the bowl and then again just taking a second here to get this incorporated so I don't need to like beat it I'm not trying to get air into it I'm not trying to make it increase in volume it's really a very straightforward process when you're making shortbread dough um, but I just like to do it in steps instead of throwing everything into the bowl. Some recipes just say to throw everything in and it can be very challenging to get the flour to mix with the butter in that case. And even still, it's that that's probably the most challenging part here is in a second, you'll see it just takes a second to convince the flour that it wants to mix in with the butter and, sh and sweetener, okay? So that's all we're looking for, okay? Just until they're combined, you can see that there's no more kind of sweetener left. It's all incorporated into the butter. All right, so that was, sorry, one cup of butter and um, half a cup of sweetener, okay? And the, the amount of sweetener will change a little bit depending on the brand. You probably know the brand that you work with, but roughly half a cup equivalent um, of sugar, okay? Two and three quarter cups of the Farm Girl low carb pastry flour, okay? So I'm gonna add that in here. And then this is the part where you just wanna be patient, okay? So we're just gonna start mixing slowly but surely. I find that I normally have, oh, <laughs> Get it all over your jacket. I find that I do normally have the best results when um, I work with my hands at the end of this process, but we'll start with the spoon. Um, this is where the beaters can kind of be a pain because they will send flour everywhere as the big lumps of butter try to get mixed into it, but you can do it with the beater. You just wanna be on very low speed for the beginning part of this, okay? So I will probably speed this up. I'm just gonna go around nice and slow looking for like the lumps of butter and slowly breaking them down and incorporating them into the flour. Stir it every once in a while, scrape the bottom, and eventually this will come together in a dough. I will, I'll speed this part up and then I'll come back in a second here um, and just talk about what you want to do to finish it if it's still crumbly. Okay, this is, um, at this point you can just keep mixing this with a spoon and eventually you will get the dough to come together for you, okay? I find that the easiest way to finish this up is with your hands. Don't be afraid to get your hands in there. Um, you don't wanna mix it too much, okay? The heat from your hands can start to melt out the butter, so it's important to just do this quickly, but I'm gonna go in and I'm basically gonna kind of squish everything together and then just keep moving my hands around the bowl and squishing, okay, until I feel all of that butter getting incorporated into the flour. You can see that you can stir it forever with the spoon and you'll think it's too dry and it's never gonna to come together. And as soon as you get your hands in here and just start kind of compressing, 
It's not like we're kneading it per se, right? Because there's no gluten is going to really develop unless you over mix it. But we're just trying to get everything where all of that crumbliness. It is a crumbly dough, but it's not going to like, it should hold its shape together here. Okay, so we're almost there. You can see how quickly once I started using my hands, that finished coming together. All right, so that's essentially it. As soon as you have it uniform like that, bring it up close to the cameras so and get all the bottom of the bowl here. Okay, so you can see it's nice. It is crumbly, like you can crumble it apart, but it does hold together. Okay, so this is basically done. That's all there is to it. Shortbread is not the trickiest, as long as you kind of know the steps and you're using good ingredients. I recommend getting the best quality butter that you can get, okay? And our flour actually does, you know, leave a really nice flavor to these. And then of course the sweetener you use. If you're using the erythritol, um, you're going to have that little bit of that like lightly cooling sensation to your cookies at the end. Isomalt doesn't really have that. It'd be a little bit harder to find, but you can order it online, okay? And it's a great op option for, um, for doing holiday baking. Okay. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna show a couple different options. What you can do is roll this out into a square and then bake it in a glass dish like this. This is gonna do about an eight by eight inch square, this amount of dough. I, um, I don't really love to do it in a pan like this because you end up with rounded edges and it's kind of sloped on the edges as well. This will work. I just, if you wanna make them like really nice fingers, then the trick that I like to use is, we'll just set that aside, is I'm actually gonna form this on top of a piece of foil, okay? And we're gonna look for roughly an eight by eight inch uh, square. I'm just gonna grab a rolling pin. It's got a little rolling pin here. And actually, it's actually easier sometimes to do most of this just by hand. And you can also use, um, we're gonna use this to cut them shortly, so you can also use a back scraper like this. Just kind of press it out. It's just the rolling pin to help give a little bit more uniformity to it, but they don't have to be perfectly level. I also, again, if you're looking for them all to be roughly the same size, it can be nice to just have a ruler, okay? So we're looking for eight inches by eight inches. We still have a little ways to go. They should be around like maybe two centimeters, which is what, like four fifths of an inch or whatever. So um, you just want to take your time with this. Again, if you're using your hands, um, just be careful that you're not like touching it a ton. You don't want to melt out that butter. It's almost got the consistency of Play-Doh, kind of crumbly Play-Doh is what we're looking for. So we're at seven by seven and a half, so we're almost there. And you can just kind of use the pastry scraper to kind of shore up the edges. Kind of push it outwards to get a square. Keeping an eye here, so we're almost at eight. Almost at eight, just slightly bigger. If you do have a shortbread mold, you can do it in the shortbread mold too. The only difference of um, that's going to be different here than than if you made these with flour is there is that little bit of leavening, which uh, again there's like some baking powder, baking soda in the pastry flour, which helps to give some kind of poof. It doesn't do a lot to these because of the amount of butter, but they do, um, they do like again, spread a little bit. So the shape in your, um, if you're using one of those shortbread molds, those traditional shortbread molds might not keep its shape perfectly. Okay, so that's great, that's eight by eight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to, without flattening it, just kind of lightly, sorry, without like spreading it, just lightly flatten the top like this. All right, I'll go around with my pastry scraper one more time. This kind of, Sure up the edges to make sure that it's square. Now I do like to use one of these pastry scrapers to form the fingers as opposed to going over this with a knife because a knife can cut through the foil, which we're trying to not do here, okay? And again, if you want to, um, if you want to be you know, precise about it, we're gonna do down the middle, so we'll cut it in half down the middle. So we'll make a mark at four inches on both sides. Okay, we'll just cut through there. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a fork. And we're gonna prick it with a fork to give it that kind of traditional look. Um, so you wanna make sure that the, the fingers are at least um, the width of the fork, okay? So about an inch should work, so if we do we do it here, we've got eight, right? So we'll do, we'll cut them 
at one inch intervals. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just do like to use a ruler because it just gives you more uniformity to it. Okay, so like that. The same thing down here. Okay, and we'll cut through now. We'll do these in one inch fingers. Okay, so we've got that divided up. Now what I'm gonna do here, so before we, we're gonna poke it with a fork in a second, just to give it that kind of traditional look. I'm gonna use a baking tray. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold this up. So this is just kind of my extra way of doing this. If you're just kind of patient, we're gonna basically make our own little pan out of the foil, which will prevent them from spreading. And, um, and just make it a little bit easier to get those nice straight edges, okay? So I'm just gonna fold this up. I'll do just these two edges first, and then I will transfer it. This is obviously extra. If you don't wanna do this, you would roll it into a square, transfer it into your glass baking dish, or if you have an eight by eight inch square, pie, um, square cake pan, that would also work. Okay, this is just not everybody has the pan, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna transfer this over to the baking tray, just like that, okay? And I'll fold up these other edges as well. So it doesn't have to be perfect, because this isn't gonna like, ooze out or anything like that. But what we're gonna basically do is be creating just like a little square pan of our own out of the foil. Okay, so just like that. Same thing on this side. Okay, just like that. So again, we're not gonna have perfectly straight edges, but this will help it from just like spreading all out. And then what I'm gonna go to is we're just, we're gonna poke with a fork, but only about halfway down through the dough, okay? So don't poke all the way to the bottom of the pan. And just give them, you know, even pokes halfway down. This is just for that traditional look. I will speed this part up. All right, so that's what we're looking for. Now, I've got my oven preheated to 375 Fahrenheit, which is 190 Celsius. I'm gonna bake these for about 22 to 28 minutes. It's gonna depend on the thickness and stuff like that, depending on how you shape them and stuff. But we're looking for basically um, just lightly golden around the edges. You don't want your shortbread to take a bunch of color because it kind of covers up the flavor. Ideally, what these are tasting like is sweetened butter, okay? That's essentially what the flavor of shortbread is. Um, a trick that I'm gonna do, and I'll pull these out. So after about 10 to 12 minutes, I'm gonna pull them out and just with the tip of a sharp knife, go through and divide those lines a second time. This is not completely necessary, but even with regular shortbread, bread when you make it with with all-purpose or whole wheat flour or sorry with wheat flour they will kind of stick back together again and you can let them cool completely and go back through like with a serrated knife and separate them I prefer to do it midway through baking which keeps them kind of easy to break apart whenever they come out of the oven okay so I'll pop these in 375 it's already preheated bake them for about 10 minutes I'll pull them out and we'll come back and I'll show you just dividing them up again with the tip of a knife pop them back in to finish and then the last thing to have on hand when they're done optional is if you want the like the, the sugar on top you actually add it after they're done baking so you might think that we're gonna you would sprinkle the sugar on top to have that kind of granulated sugar on top it'll actually end up burning in the oven or caramelizing often so right when they come out of the oven at the, like the second they come out we'll go over and hit it a little a little bit sprinkle of that granulated sweetener so that will fuse onto the top of them while they're still hot and they'll have that nice crunchy bit on top okay so I'm gonna pop these in and I'll be back in 10 minutes all right, these have been in for 10. You can see that they've puffed up and they've kind of fused back together. So this is what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna separate the fingers again one more time. Let's bring you down here. So you just wanna be patient. You wanna work quickly here, but not, um, not rush it, okay? So I'm gonna grab a paper towel just so I can wipe my knife off. And we'll just gently go through here, down the lines we already created, and separate these fingers one more time, okay? And by doing this partway through the baking process, this will really make it that they come apart easily after they're done baking. Okay, so just going through, use a thin knife. I wouldn't recommend using the pastry, uh, like the, the bench scraper like I did earlier for this step because you'll probably just kind of crush them all up because they do kind of blend into each other, right? Because of that puff. So just going through, it takes a second. Well, maybe a couple minutes. And then we'll just pop these back in the oven and finish them up for the rest of the bake time, okay? So 
You don't want to include this piece in the bake time. You can see that the edges are just starting to take a little bit of color. So what we're looking for is for basically the whole surface of them to be that lightly, lightly golden color. And then the edges will just be starting to brown. And that's when you know they're done. All right. So just a couple more cuts here. It's best to go up and down like this, not to pull the knife through. Okay, if you pull it through, you'll probably start to crumble them up. And then one last one down the center here. All right, and that's it. So now those are gonna be much easier when they come out of the oven. We'll pop this back in for about another 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes, roughly, okay, until we get that color we're looking for. So I will be back whenever these are done baking and I will show you the sprinkling with the sugar and then we'll let them cool and I'll show you what they look like inside. I'll be back. God, it smells amazing. Okay, so this is what we're looking for, just lightly golden, all right? So not too brown, just around the edges are a little bit darker. Bring it down so you can see a little bit better from a better angle. Okay, but before I, oh, there's the timer right there. That timer was for 22 minutes, so we were just right at the right amount of time. I'm just, as these are still super hot, I'm gonna go back over here and sprinkle with a little bit more of this granulated sweetener, okay? One thing too, it depends on how concerned you are about carbs, but if you do like, if you've made everything else with sweetener and you've done it with the flour, you could add like a teaspoon or two of sugar on top of this, regular sugar. It's gonna add a very minimal amount of carbs, but it'll give you that texture, right? So it's all up to you. It is the holiday season. So if you're not, not too concerned about like a little bit of extra of sugar, um, grams of sugar in there, you could do that. But this isomaltose is just gonna work good too. Okay, so just like that. Just as it's because they're still so hot that will kind of fuse onto the top mostly and then what I'm gonna let these do now is let them cool completely so this will probably be like an hour that I'll let these sit and cool and then I will come back and break them apart and show you what they look like inside I cannot wait to taste these okay I'll be back in a little bit once these have cooled down it's been about an hour and these have cooled down completely they're completely room temperature now so let's try to unmold them and see what they look like inside break apart pretty easily now because of that extra step we did of scoring them. Okay, I'm just like gently breaking them apart. They're a little darker inside than the traditional shortbread and that's because of the, the nature of the flour, that faba bean protein, but you can see they have that nice flaky, crumbly texture and they taste amazing. This falls apart in your mouth. It's got that nice buttery flavor to it. So simple, so delicious, a must have for the holiday season. So that is Scottish style shortbread fingers made with the Farm Girl low carb pastry flour. Next week, I'm working on some gingerbread. So stay tuned for Farm Girl Fridays moving through December. It'll all be holiday baking coming up. Okay, have an awesome rest of your day and I'll see you soon.